Greetings, everyone. This is Joanna from the Universal Love Light, Heavenly Radiance, and the Sacred Corner. So thank you for meeting with us in the Sacred Corner. It's been a beautiful spring day as we have Source Creator behind us. Always behind us when we can, all that we are. <laughs> thank you. We've got the beautiful nature. We wanted to, our next topic that we wanted to talk about is um, the profundity of presence and allowance. Um, and we've talked about sovereignty. We've talked about every moment being a blessing and being a joy and the miracles that are held within it. And our way to experience that is the presence, the allowance. Um, as we've talked about um, moving into these new vibratory energies and the experiences of being a sovereign, free-flowing being, um, uh, the way, the portal within that is through allowance and unconditional trust that you are this free flowing being of holy light. You're always constantly with mother, father, source, creator, your spirit, the omnipresence, however you define and um, <clears throat> honor all that is life, all that is spirit, moving the, um, the intricate divine elegance that is all life, all omnipresence, all experiences, awakening to the allness that you are. However you define it and you um, choose to move about honoring it and praying with it and communing with it, living sacredly with it, will um, determine your experience. There is no right or wrong, obviously, because it's all source. Um, we're, we're offering it to you from our perspective on the divine emanations and the radiations that I receive from source, the divine mind, and how to explain it and express it so that it's easier to understand processes to move into higher vibratory frequencies and raising your, your vibration. Um, Presence and allowance is allowing all of your consciousness and you as the divine driver, the manager of your, um, your ship, if you will, um, the director of your ship, the director of your reality experience and knowing that you call all of your consciousness into your divine presence, your sacred portal, your sacred altar, that oneness of who you are, the source creator. And it's at the heart level. It's actually at the very center of your being, how I've experienced it, the divine sacred heart. There is the door of God. Um, the mouth of God, which sits at the base of the skull, um, and these are the, the portals and the vortices, the chakras, that are also linked with your the I am presence, the God essence of you, that is again fanned out from the only presence frequencies, those tendrils that come through all that is, linking you as your God source, and vibrationally through every particle, every atom, and so on, <laughs> for giving you the micro macro again. And so these various portals and energies, you, as you awaken to your subtle bodies, as you awaken to all that you are as an omnipresent being, the multidimensional being that you are as physical and spirit, you allow yourself to feel and tap into these energies and these aspects of your bodies that are awakening you. Chakras are far more than seven. So allow yourself to um, kind of release all constraints and restrictions on what you thought you were and what you thought we were made of because it's far more dynamic and elegant and profound than we ever thought. Why our medical systems and our sciences will be changing tenfold over the next 10 years because it will start to encompass spirit and science harmonizing as one to all that we are as, as souls, as energies and essences of the omnipresence, working within the divine elegant design of all that is, not just this galaxy, but all that is. Um, and that presence and that allowance, the allowance um, is what most people have challenged because that allowance is usually held and hindered from the um, 3D perspectives that hold um, you back in limited beliefs, limited patterns of thought, limiting energies of who you think you are and what you think you're worthy of. And um, so clearing those um, allow you to slip moment for moment for moment into the new vibration of unconditionally being loved and supported by source. And that's processed by um, transmutation, you know, just transmuting from old to new, old to new, old to new. Realigning in every moment with your unconditional, limitless, eternal source essence as a sovereign being of exploration. As infinite as possible, um, and what we've found over the years is that even by using mantras that are limiting, still keep you in a limited perspective. So begin at the infinite, begin at the infinite, um, eternal, sovereign, exploratory being that you are. So if you're using mantras, create mantras that allow you to feel the most expansive and infinite. And that allows you to be that fully present, all um, um, zero point, if you will. So kind of that presence, um, is that commandment that you have over all that you are as a multidimensional being and that takes practice and focus that focuses from a higher mind focus not the lower ego mind so why when you go into meditation and self-care that you allow the ego to observe and i usually see my ego on my left side i don't know why <laughs> it's just what just what my bodies and my energies have just gotten used to so that i know where it is 
it, it's all it, it's all you know kind of energy so um but that allows me to feel what's going on in my field so that i can manage myself because i'm able to attune to things at a very subtle level so but you'll have your own way of, of understanding so just to call in your ego your ego in a loving commanding voice remember anytime you're working with spirit um, we're just offering you those based on what we've experienced and how it is purely in the source creator is honoring and valuing and appreciating all life all souls contracts so regardless of what appears to be moving in your reality and that that means you as well so honor and appreciate and value all that you are value your ego honor your ego appreciate your ego so lovingly command all that you're moving through and all that you desire to experience and explore and express will allow you that open portal of ever presence if you're damning or frustrated or angry, you deal with those energies first, then you go into your co-creative experience. Because there's reasons why you're feeling the agitation or that frustration, especially now that we're all in this confinement. <laughs> you know, it's not allowing us to feel as exploratory and as free as we'd like to. So uh, deal with those and clear those. It's a perfect moment for us to dive within and truly explore all that we are within. And so there's many great and wonderful and infinite opportunities for us to reconnect with source and spirit which is why much of this has occurred so that we can reevaluate and we can rewrite and we can redesign and redirect who we are as spirit and source so use those as your your validating um canvases to kind of rewrite yourself and release the energies um, what i find helps first is by doing exercise with the intention to release all frustrations and all pent-up energies that need to be released because as we're moving through these ascension programs, every single being, their body will be shifted and modified, everybody, without exception, whether they choose to move along with ascension joyfully and fluidically and expressively or resist it. Their bodies will go through greater um, resistance, illness, trauma, imbalance. Those who resist, um, we all move through resistance. That's just a natural part of it. There's no judgment. But those that resist because they're holding down the energies of what really wants to flow. And so this is why it's, it's really important through self-care to create those daily exercises to intend. I'm releasing what no longer serves. I'm releasing those frustrations of being pent up. You know, so intend it because you can tune in on a subtle level where you, what you're feeling. So that's why that daily self-care is really, really important. And so that it doesn't feel as if it's tapping into your co-creative time right or just being joyful you know um i remember yesterday i was just thinking you know i remember years and years ago when i was working two jobs and i was I, i've always been such a hard worker having you know many jobs at, at many times and even as a full-time mom you know having jobs and you know we all know how much work goes into being a parent um that you're you're i there was so many times where i would be working you know 50 hours I don't know, just crazy hours a week and thinking that I just want to be at home just doing nothing. <laughs> no, and now I'm at home, you know, with the ability to do nothing. Um, but I, I rarely do because I just enjoy creating, you know. But just to enjoy what we're moving through right now and have it be the most pivotal point of your realignment. Realign who you are as a source spirit now. Who are you and how can you be more present? This is really allowing each person to be more present with who they are as spirit, as love. Because when we do create that presence, we understand that what we were holding in those frustrations and agitations and limitations were old beliefs that really need to be let go. And you can choose through your divine sovereign free will to choose to let it go. So I came up with a, a drawing years ago that helped in my coaching. Um, I don't know if I have it here. But these, these illustrations really help me um, create presence of being. And these are the energies that really hold dear to my heart. And they allow me to feel really anchored in who I am as spirit. Because we're co-creating different ways of perceiving our reality. How we can commune sacredly. How can we can be with the land. And how we can allow all animals to live with us in harmony and oneness. How we can create you know, beautiful energies with all life. To allow us that that peace and that inner knowing that we are as above as below and this beautiful infinity of all life and all interactions be this beautiful harmonization and presence but it's through our allowance i'm accepting that my life is is no longer what it was yesterday and i'm okay with that i'm really excited about it <laughs> but most often than not because of the programs that we're letting go of it's that fear of the unknown and it's okay to admit that just say i don't know what's going on i have no idea and talk with your, your, your teams, you know, call all of your presence in, have your ego observe, 
for all of your, your soul forward and the Holy Mother, Father, Source Creator, God, however you decide to choose to work with spirit. And those that love you unconditionally. Um, I understand there's fears of the unknown. Can you assist me in releasing these and transmuting these? And give me, give me an inspiration or give me a picture of, of how I can direct my energy called co-creative um, exaltation. Who are you as a spirit and how can I exalt? Because that's why we're all here. We're here to exalt who we are. Um, but it's, um, and that your teams will guide you and you'll get inspirations in your dreams or just thoughts keep running through your head as you're doing dishes and your housework, whatever it might be. Because those are those inspirations from the higher mind that catch you when you're in this open space. That's allowance to allow those higher divine mind energies to, to touch you um, in a multidimensional way that are different every time because your soul wants you to experience energy in all forms, whether it's a pro, whether it's nature, your, your children. You know, my children often activate me. They'll be drawing something or they'll be reading a book on something or they'll come to me with something they just created and it will activate me <clears throat> because our souls are threaded together. Your soul family and your soul tribe are threaded together. And at nighttime when you're dreaming, your soul and their soul are saying, can you remind me tomorrow of what my purpose is? Can you come to me with a beautiful creation? And so this is why there are no accidents. It's all divine design. It's just a matter of how tuned in you are. So part of the coaching that we that you are you and Source are within the all, like you and Source, Mother, Father, all that is, your omnipresence is here as that molecule, atom, particle, however you want to define it, macro, micro. And within this, there is all that you are in the omnipresence. And and what parts of your what parts of your reality now require you to go within and say, how can I align with greater presence of who I am as spirit? Because you want to that presence is your omnipresence, it's your essence. And it's hard to explain because we don't have the right, right our words really confine us. It's a vibration of being. Your essence is God. So there are no words to really define it. But that's what presence really is. How can I be fully present in my, in my creative, my creative individuality? How can I really be present with who I am, a source, just enjoying my kids? <laughs> How can I be fully present with nature, just enjoy nature, just to sit back and be present? So allow presence um, and your allowance of presence, trusting that every moment is unfolding for a reason. Um, oftentimes, especially when you're going through great clearings, we're, we're gonna be going through a really big, um, the beginning of May, I think it's the full moon, the full moon in May, um, there's a really big energy shift um, and it will allow all of us to release much density. density. Um, these celestial alignments really help us um, but to allow it, to allow the process of what we're all moving through to be and to pull from it that wisdom that you require to release what wasn't appreciated, honor. Honor the relationships for what they have allowed you to explore. And that's really what it is. At the end of your life, if you will, a life reflection. And I often say that self-care includes monthly or weekly, however you want to do it, life reflections. So don't leave it till the end of your life. <laughs> You know, it's one of those things, you know, your bucket list. Well, I wish I had done more life reflections because then I probably would have been more in alignment to having fun and creating and exploring. You know, it's just like life is so short. Why hold back on love? Why hold back on creating? Why hold back on being free? You know, this is why we're here. You know, so that was, that, that's what those life reviews allow you to do. This week, you know, how have I learned and how have I appreciated everybody in my life? How have I honored the experience of what I've gone through. How can I honor who I am and be present with that? What is my presence with my own self-value? And sit with it. I want to be present with who I, I want to be that presence, that it's an energy vibration, it's allness, it's oneness, it's zero point with you as all it is. Because that is that next moment that allows for that next. Presence is directly linked with allowance on either end. So, if you, we're just going to give this because we don't have the infinity in front of us right now, but this is the divine and holy, divine mind, which we were talking about, and your, your soul's contract with God. We have the divine male and female. Harmonization is constantly going on. Why we always recenter to the middle. This is, they gave this to me in a vision, and it was a butterfly. And so I had the illustration drawn up. And how we're always harmonizing male and female frequencies based on what our soul is here to heal, what we're here to experience and express and explore as individuals, as souls. Um, and that allowance is on both sides. Am I allowing myself to let go and see what the blessings I've always learned? How can I allow this realignment of my highest and my best from the divine mind, from Gaia, from all of my collective? And how can I allow myself to move into the omnipresence, the infinite? 
without expectation, because that limits, without um, definition or um, um, having to have things work out or be, um, or be egoic, egoically driven to it be a certain way, to look a certain way, to have an outcome of a certain way or vibration of a certain way, to really let go and be an allowing of whatever unfolds and unfolds as perfect as it is. So there is allowance on all sides, allowing yourself to be completely free flowing as source so that there is no resistance and blocking because that's what resistance does. It keeps you in that energy that wants to keep flowing. There's no judgment either way because we've all experienced resistance to change. <laughs> Every single human being on this planet is moving through change without exception, without exception, that's evolution. And so however we allow that change to occur will be the betterment of your body, the betterment of your soul, betterment of your spirit because your spirit wants evolution. Your spirit wants to release what you need your service. Because your spirit knows what's always in its highest and its best. It's the lower mind, the ego, that just needs to relax and sit down a little so that you can be present and say, I am the director of this ship. Yes, with one with mother, father, source. I want to be present with my highest and my best, my most expansive, sovereign being. How can I explore this presence? And you feel all that you are just expand as we all. There's no expectation. Your mind is not saying it has to look like I'm going to get an inspiration, I'm going to act on it. Those are ego of male energies that we're moving into a more expanded harmonization of all of this. And it's not that the male energy is wrong or bad, it's not. It's just that that's how we've been programmed through eons of experience as humans. And that's why we're moving through an entire collective rebalance. It must. We must be in the reception, which is allowance. Allowance is the divine feminine frequency of allowing yourself to be all. <laughs> it's not an egoic um, um, goal, um, path, if you will, of A, B, C, D. Um, that's not it at all, because we're multidimensional beings. It's all. That presence is your allness. So soaking within and surrendering within allness, releasing all expectations, releasing all, even the highest vision that you might have, your, your teams are bringing through collaborations from multi-dimensional perspectives and there's no one or no way that we can at our physical mind level, the ego mind level, ever, ever organize and orchestrate what's coming for us. It's beyond that. <laughs> the only way for us to allow and flow into it, that receptivity of it, is to allow that flow and that presence to be, to be held. To be fully in moment for moment presence of all unfoldings. You'll always be in alignment with your higher self and with your soul. Because your soul wants to take you on these expansive, beautiful journeys, but are you allowing it? Are you letting go of the old belief systems and patterns and paradigms that say that if you were offered something tomorrow and you had to move and pack up, would you be okay doing it? What attachments do you hold? What limitations do you think that are holding you back? What belief systems do you feel that you're not ready for? So these are all ways that allowance and being present with all that you are as an omnipresent, fluidic being of light, fluid, malleable, moving, honoring, expansive, infinite. There is nothing that's holding you back. Nothing. You're one with source. I am as source is. I am an infinite creative being of light. I am elegant. I'm delicate. I'm beautiful as light is. Source is. You are light. You are love, expansive and free. So how may you be present with it and allow the beauty and the majesty and everything to unfold that will allow you to unfold in that beauty? It's miraculous. And we wanted to pull, oh, we wanted to pull, oh, we wanted to pull a beautiful, we're going to pull two cards that will connect with this. And one is our butterfly deck. Butterflies death by during virtue, because butterflies are all about transformation and trans, um, transmuting of what was. Um, and the butterfly is the epitome of, and so is the dragonfly. Um, that's why our winged friends are always teaching us lessons about freedom and liberation and soaring to move new heights. Is the center that's the butterfly that I was showing. Uh, which, I mean, we have so many nature symbolisms. So truly be present with nature. What is it showing you? Nature will always show you what you need to learn and, and not necessarily learn. I mean, for me, because I'm such an avid, I've come here as a teacher at heart. Um, 
but it's just to enjoy life, enjoy who you are. So allow that to be part of the life, part of your soul's joy. I always keep returning to lessons and teaching. <laughs> But that's part of my life lesson at this point, is just to let go of what you think might be a lesson or a soul's theme to learn and move on. It will innately happen and occur. You will innately heal. You will innately learn what you need to learn. But have it be, how can you just feel more joyful being you? <laughs> you know, how can you feel more joyful being you? And we're going we're gonna to do, um, and, you know, allow yourself just to be present with just everything being perfect. You know, you're going to heal. You're going to move forward. Just open into love. Okay, so we're going to pull those two cards. We're going to pull two from the Denise Lynn gateway. Walk into your gate presence. <laughs> and just set little goals for yourself, you know, when you wake up and do your morning self-care. Today, I'm going to be more present. I'm more present with my soul and my spirit that's always talking with you. You've got guides and, you know, you're, you know, you know me, I've got... I can hear and I can sense so much. Um, and they're very respectful. They're so respectful. Um, the energies that are in your fields that you're sensing and feeling, if they are, um, you know, because I can hear those too, um, if they're um, um, taunting and, um, you know, negative or teasing, then those are energies that need to be cleared. Um, because those are energies that are picked up from, from the field, from others that, um, you know, aren't serving your highest and your greatest. So that's how I, I tell the kids to be just aware of the different energies that they can pick up on and sense. Um, because if you're not clearing your fields and you're not clearing your bodies, then you're just picking up a bunch of stuff from other people that they're not clearing their fields and they're, it's just, it's just how energy works. They're not necessarily bad or, you know, um, evil or anything it's just that you can begin to sense the different energies that, that people come with that aren't aware that they're carrying them and wonder why they're bumping into things and wondering why they feel down or negative um, it, it's a matter of being the owner of your body and your fields and your home and caring for it as sacredly as you would the source because you are and those energies that want to play in those um, those those arenas will move on to other other frequencies because you're constantly aligning to love so you know, just stating with firm love and appreciation. Um, this energy no longer serves me. You need to leave my space and my bodies, please, now. I'm a divine sovereign being. Must leave my space now. And then move around your space and co-create as a 5D being. And know that you're holding the light of source. I hold the light of source. This is my 5D space. It is sacred. So as you are, it, it so is. You know, just honoring and owning it. And not um, damning it or being fearful of it. Because that, um, those fearful energies, worry energies, all of that just attracts it. It's just like that repulsion and attraction energy in chemistry. It's all about energy, right? Honor the all. The all is source. It's not for us to judge. It's not for us to, you know, run away from and throw the gates at. That's, that's the, um, that's old paradigms that had us working in battles of light and dark. That's not what it, this is at all. Um, it's old, old, outdated um, understandings of fear. And that keeps us working in fear. You know, own who you are as a sovereign being. Be present in your light. Be present in your owning, owning of it. And know, call in what you are worthy of co-creating with. And all will sort itself out. You know, own your light. Walk within it. Stand within it. And be aware of the energies you're sensing and just, you know, own your space. This is my space. How would you go? <laughs> you know, um, it's like walking in the, uh, we, they gave me this visualization this morning because I love forests. It's like walking in the forest and um, honoring all people's paths, all honoring everything. We don't have to judge it. We can simply direct where we choose to creatively express. And that's the easiest way to put it. And we can put it in a million different ways and, and parables. It's just like walking into a forest and on a summer day. And in the forest, there's an infinite number of trees and branches and different, different um, energies that offer different experiences. You can choose to pay attention to, um, you're soaking and you're moving within all of it, but you can choose to direct your attention to what makes you feel good. It's not judging that plant. It's not saying that you don't belong. Everything is source. But it's how you direct from your heart level, how you direct from your allness. I'm one with everything. I'm not going to, I'm going to dismiss you or dismantle you, dismantle you. You're a part of source. But I choose to play here now. So that is the most honoring and respectful and um, aligning way of source creator. So really, truly allow yourself to be um, as often as you can. Trust me, um, I can say this from experience. If, if, if it is done any other way than honoring and appreciating, 
and directing in your own inner power, it will continue to recycle back into your, in your experience. It just will. Because that's a lesson that's here to be learned by everybody. We're releasing every aspect that we have about light and dark. That's what's got us into many of the um, experiences. And again, that's what came out simplifying. It's very simple. We are the all. All is appreciated, all is honored. You get to direct your path where you want to. And that's when you receive from the angels. <laughs> You're always receiving from the angels, but you are, you are much more in tune with it. And on the bottom of it is taking action. Yeah, choose, direct. Where do you want your energies to go? How do you want to creatively explore yourself and express yourself? Enthusiastically, you know, it's not about judging or um, separating and distancing kind of thing. Oh, that will all naturally innately work out. You're here to um, innately co-create in your sovereign path. Say, I honor that experience. I value that experience. It's taught me so much. You're a part of the all. You're a child of God. You're a source of God. You're a soul of God. You're an energy of God. I honor you and I respect you. I choose as a sovereign being to move this way. And you have every right and sovereign choice to do so. But you're doing it with honor and you're doing it with respect for all that is source. Um, otherwise, those energies will come back to play because it, it's not being a part of the accepted whole. And so that's what allness and oneness is. And so the first one that came out was emotions. So honoring your emotions. You know, how can you allow and receive today? How can that be a part of your emotional healing? Usually part of the emotional healings is because of all of the densities and the energies we've come from has not allowed us to receive our sovereignty, to receive our divinehood. And that's part of our emotional pains and our imbalances that we're all healing. How can we receive the allness and be present with it? How can we be present with just being present? Just the silence of nature. So how are my emotions healed? How is my body healed? Just by being present with nature. And our emotions allow us to open up because our emotions is how we create if it's done in balance. And how can we retire what needs to be retired and move on to new flowers, co-creation? How can we retire those aspects of us that um, really require that transmutation and that love from us that we can only give us? That inner child and that shadow work is us loving us. It can be looked at and defined in an infinite number of ways, but it, it will always come back to us loving us. You cannot get what you need from anything that's outside of you. It's the experience, yes. It's the exploration and the expression, yes but it's you loving you from within first. And we retire and transmute into something new. So there's never any loss that the source was telling me last week. When relationships and, and cycles of death and all of those things occur that we have, we have defined as loss, there are no real losses in creation. <laughs> you know, it's always being transmuted back into new because that's, there's the movement of evolution. It's how we have defined it and believed it and have been taught. So we're redefining and we're taking the, the ceilings and the boxes and the side, the walls off and we're free flowing to retire what has been keeping us held back in separation and in de-evolution. De and that's affecting everything that we have a relationship with, which is everything, our relationship with nature, our relationship with our planet, our relationship with ourselves and source. The most important and most valuable experience that you have is your relationship as you as source, because that is the portal and the epitome to all things. How you experience, how you define, how you explore, how you co-create, how you move in any one moment, how you create your dreams, your manifestations, it's all through source. Your relationship as source, as source is, I am. So your dynamics of every relationship will change and be altered and healed in the transmutation of you lifting the box off and retiring what no longer serves. And when we receive from the angels, we're understanding that it comes through the simplification of what has really been blogging us down, <laughs> you know, holding us in captivity that we feel it's been something outside of us, but it hasn't been. It's just been our belief systems. You know, do I really need, do I really need all this stuff? You know, how much can I donate? How much can I get rid of and help another? I can, all I really need is source. Because I'll be shown the way. I'll be shown where I can sleep. I'll be shown how, how I can get my food. I'll be shown how I'll always have access to my children and my friends and my family. There is no loss. We're all one. We're all moving in this big quantum soup of the all. And so anything that needs to be healed and let go of, we can do quite simply. Do I need this? Is it really necessary for my life now? And this is what our entire collective is moving through. How can we simplify into 
the, the, the presence and the allowance of what is really important for us is love and our exploration and experience of who we are as source. And as we look after that as sovereign beings ourselves, then we innately look after the all. And that's what many will have a hard time wrapping their head around because they come, many come from, from such strict um, backgrounds of tradition. And that's fine too, there's no judgment. But those are the parts of tradition that are required to be healed. Because tradition, to honor a tradition and bring it with you into a new realm is what we're being asked to do. So you can still honor, say, um, you know, family dinners. You can still honor you know, important holiday experiences that are good for that creative circle, collective circle. But it doesn't necessarily mean that any one being has to be held back um, to, to maintain old traditional um, paradigms that do not serve the spirit's sovereignty. And one that um, many women are here, including myself, part of my soul's theme is to transcend lineage suppression of and subjugation of the divine feminine. The voice of the divine feminine, the gifts and the wisdoms of the divine feminine, the intelligence of the divine feminine, the spirituality, metaphysical and healing gifts of the divine fem feminism, the roles that we have played and how we have um, um, squashed and detained our voices to maintain um, outdated family lineage roles that don't serve the soul. You know, we have the sovereign right as every other being to explore ourselves creatively. <clears throat> as you can see, my throat is starting to clear. <clears throat> We are of great intelligence. We are of great creativity. We are of great, um, every being is. We each and every one of us, without exception, doesn't matter what they, um, they, they allow themselves to believe to be true. Everyone has divine male and female lifetimes and roles and bodies. And each are here to move and transcend in their own unique soul's blueprint way what's important for their soul to learn and grow from. And so those that find it most challenging to move beyond tradition, that's their, their deepest soul's theme to transcend to know that sovereignty and free will and creativity are that free flowing experience that each are responsible for um, within themselves. And so on us allowing us to do that, we allow our children to also do that as well and have them not fall into traditional roles that suppress and depress that creative life because that causes so many imbalances mentally, physically, etherically, and emotionally. So many imbalances and um, illnesses are because of the suppression of our creative light. Um, it, it truly is at the core of our health and our wellness, um, along with many other things, but these will come out in time, obviously, and why we've been teaching them for so long is the basic understanding of our multidimensional bodies, how we can free flow and be pr truly present with who we are as sovereign beings and allowing ourselves to express it and explore it and experience it. We've come to experience ourselves as the all. The all. We did not come to just experience ourselves as the one being that's continually cleaning the house. That's a part of it, yes. But we also have dynamic, we also have dynamic gifts and expressions and we're meant to help creation. We've come to help creation in every way. It doesn't matter what forms or bodies we take, but within this, my dynamic lineage, part of my soul's theme is to truly let go of all paradigms of socioeconomic, familial, um, suppressive roles and definitions that we've held and for me to truly follow my heart and my soul's calling in whatever way that my soul directs me and I will follow it because it will serve and my, my children and all those that are signed up with me and all those that are threaded with me have known that at the highest consciousness level that yes there will be a point where mommy does this yes there will be a point that mommy does that and I'm going to learn from it I'm going to see the value in that following that honor following that dynamic courage um, and that changes the paradigm of how we move about our planet because it should be free flowing. We should be moving about and helping the planet. We should be allowing ourselves to commune in whatever way we want. It may not look like it, it may look like something different. But we each have the right to follow our soul's calling because each and every person that's connected with us has that linked in their soul's plan to learn from, from their unique perspective, not from what we think it is. And that's a big thing that parents are stepping away from and having it be a sovereign experience not from what we as parents think our children need. Our children don't necessarily, especially now, they, my, my teams were telling me this years and years ago, and it was really boggling my mind because I was always brought up in that traditional, mom stays home, mom cooks the meals, mom looks after the house. I mean, that was just the traditions that I was brought up in. You know, and as soon as I was ready to work, I was out. 
<laughs> you know, um, you know, it's just my soul wants to be free and I deserve to be free and it's my sovereign right, you know, and we'll, we'll work it in the way that we need to work it for everybody's, you know, compromising and working with it. But your soul is here to move about your soul's path because it's meant to teach and learn those lessons. But years and years ago, my souls are saying that you have no idea what their soul needs from you. You'll, you'll get the subtleties, um, but if you're not following your soul's directive and inspirations and creative explorations, you're holding that soul's part of that contract back as well because they came to see that exact thing from you. It's no different from how we have those contracts of abuse. Those contracts of abuse, in whatever way they happen and occur, they've occurred because they're allowing us to see the strength that we have inside to pull out our greatest strength, to pull out our greatest wisdom. I could not speak about what I know unless I had those experiences to pull out the wisdoms that I have. To, for me to activate, for me to activate the multidimensional um, alignments that I have from the seventh, eighth, ninth, twelfth infinite dimensions. You know, it's taken for me to go inside and be present, to be allowing of who I am as a dynamic being of sovereignty so that I can activate that wisdom to free flow through me, not keep me boxed and defined in in a role that didn't fit for me. And that's what my inner battles and inner constructs, you know, sometimes we always link back to tarot and some of the inner, uh, inner battles and inner conflicts that like the five of cups, oftentimes because we create our own reality and every, the, the energies around us just follow suit to what we believe to be true about ourselves. So any inner conflict that you have within yourself, that five of cups energy will show itself into that whatever's happening around you. So if you're feeling lack of who you are, it's because you're not following your full sovereignty experience that wants to explore. You're not allowing your voice to come forward and clear, you know, those eons of generations that said, no, I've got lots of wisdom here. Let's talk. Let's do this. You know, and if those in front of you aren't necessarily interested in hearing it, that's okay because you've taught them that lesson of opening up and exploring who you are as a truth not taught, shown as a vibration, if you will. Because oftentimes they don't understand it until later on in their life and they say, wow, when you really did that, you, you went, you know, you took that courageous leap and you did that on your own. Wow, that, you know, I look back now, that took a lot of courage. You know, when you see the society as it is, changing and rewriting everything. We're meant to create a new, we're meant to challenge old paradigms and truly break the boundaries and break all barriers. And allowing it to occur and being present with it. Um, you know, allows you to be this beautiful, dynamic essence of source. You align all of your chakras. Nothing is held back and nothing is blocked and hindered. You're in divine alignment as the mother and the father, feeding you the codes that you require to be your full self, to be your Merkaba that spins in refinement, that spins in spectacular light quotient in alignment with Gaia. As above, so below, and you are the bridge of ascension. You are that rainbow light. And it comes through allowing it. I'm being present with all that I am, and I know that I'm being drawn in the most magnificent ways. I trust it unconditionally. I'm a source. So be present with who you are. Honor your presence as source. Honor who you are as this dynamic being of light and rainbow, rainbow bridge. My body's all clear. And allow yourself to receive from the angels. So thank you, dear lighter ones. Move into your presence and allow your gloriousness to come forward. We love you. Namaste.